Carlos Pérez Tomás. I am a year student of University College London. I am the work in having done in the Center for Post-Systems Engineering uh, in the Department of Chemical Engineering. And the title of this is Interval Based Dynamic Simulation in Chemical Process Design. Uh, this work is being supervised by Professor The outline of for this presentation is as follows. Uh, first, I will explain briefly uh, uh, chemical process design, and then I am going to mention some problems arising in this topic. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about interval based dynamic simulations, uh, some mathematical description for the problem we are addressing, uh, and then some of the methods we have been using. Uh, for initial for initial value problems, uh, some case of studies, some conclusions, uh, and then what we are trying to do next, uh, some solutions. So very briefly, mm. chemical process design is concerned with establishing operating parameters and operating conditions for uh, process systems. For example, we have here a flow sheet of a uh, chemical process. Uh, to, up to now I am not, uh, going to say only that this is, this is a, a biodiesel production plant. So we have some initial conditions. Uh, and for this product we have some operating parameters that are inherent in, in to it, uh, a particular desired outcome. Uh, it is worth mentioning at this point that the desired outcome may lie into a certain range. For example, we may want a product purity of from 95 to 99 percent or something. So, if we want this range of of this desired output, we have we will have of course some uh, range of parameters and probably some range of for initial conditions. So, we are using um, dynamic simulations because they are very useful tools to obtain uh, useful information in order to uh, 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 choose the best decision in, to, for, uh, well, to achieve the desired outcome. Um, for example, here we have a process model uh, defined by the, by, by the model equation. We have some initial conditions, some parameters, and we perform the simulation and, uh, in, the, in the common way. So, we have been working with this problem right now. Uh, when certain parameters or initial conditions arise in chemical processes, chemical process models, it becomes challenging to rigorously obtain the output. We are especially interested in this because um, we are interested because, because uh, we, we want to fulfill certain safety constraints that the process must meet. So we are interested in bounds that, that, that are never crossed uh, so that the process is safe. Uh, for our case, ordinary numerical solvers can fail because for all purposes. And warranting balanced performance across the whole trajectory of complex chemical systems remains a challenge. So to illustrate the ideas that I presented before, uh, I am going to explain a little bit more. Uh, we have a process model, so in this time we have some, some initial conditions stated as intervals. We have some parameters also as uh, intervals. And now we start the whole process flow sheet from interval in initial conditions, uncertain initial conditions, and we have some uncertain operation parameters also. And we have, have of course, an uncertain outcome where the process, the desired outcome may lie. So, what we want to do is here we have uh, a a dynamic simulation for which we have the optimal performance for this driven process. We want to establish uh, safety constraints so that the process never violates them. Uh, and we want to, to carry out uh, the simulation. Uh, and we want 
to obtain the bounded performance for these processes, uh, taking into account some level of, of uncertainty, so that we have now a range of, the, of these process models, uh, which are very useful for process design, because now we have a full range of, like, of decisions. And this process, of course, must meet these safety constraints. Well, well, what we have been, do, been doing right, right now in the past few months is we have started from an initial value problem and then by some uh, mathematical procedures such as the picard little hop operator and the vanish fixed point here, we have converted it, it into an integral equation. And then we have expanded this interval term with Taylor series integral term with the service Taylor series. And there, in order to perform the interval evaluation, we have used the mean value evaluation because it uh, often yields better, uh, much tighter bounds that can be a direct evaluation. So these methods are, have this drawback, uh, the wrapping effect, so they are mainly focused on how to reduce this, this problem. And just a little illustration of this problem. Uh, hopefully, we have uh, a, a simulation and in the early stages of these processes, we can obtain very good bounds, but in, in the end, the, these bounds rapidly grow and we can, they grow up very dramatically. So, the methods that we have been using are were developed uh, some time ago by Wu, Inger, Ram, and Donner. Yeah, they are focused on giving a solution to the problem I have presented just before in the mathematical description. <coughs> so they offer like different formulations in order to compute uh, some operations that avoid this wrapping effect. Uh, so what I have done is to uh, try chemical engineering problems. Uh, and to solve them with one of these initial value problem solvers. Uh, I have taken some uncertainty into account. And for some of the problems, uh, I generated a disturbance to see if we can bound and successfully this, this behavior. So, the first case of the study is a first order reaction. This is uh, a simple reaction in a bath reactor. It has so two products, and we have to obtain another, another, sorry, two reactives, and we have to, to obtain a product. We have used some several parameters here, and we have performed the dynamic simulation for which we have obtained the, the very good maps, and we have set these safety constraints, which required it not to be crossed by this performance. Um, next, I will show you a uh, bioreactor example. Now we have some, uh, again, some internal parameters. So for this special case, we have started from uh, steady state initial conditions. And then we have to use it uh, as turbans in order to see how can we found this uh, change in the behavior after in the response. And we have set also a safety constraint that must not be crossed. And for these problems, uh, we very, very good. Now I present you a first order reversible reactor. The difference from this to the other one was that in this reaction, the, we got some reactives and they are converted into some products, but these products can also react to be converted again in the reactor. So, uh, we have set some uncertain parameters and as this um, reaction is reversible, it is very important to have like uh, a range in the, in the initial concentration. So we have set a, an initial, uh, initial condition as an interval and we have uh, obtained this simulation for this uh, product model and it's also warranted to meet the safety constraints that we have set. Uh, something 
thing about the safety concerns, they are um, set uh, in, um, dependent on, for example, some limit temperature or some concentration that is dangerous or, yeah. Well, so far I have shown you only uh, very simple process models for which we have no problems with the obtaining bounds, but now I present you a little bit more complicated process. This is the glucagon receptor model. Uh, this only describes a certain hormone in the, the build-up of a certain hormone in the bloodstream in the liver. So we have now we have five states <coughs> for this model. And we have set only one non certain parameter. It is worth mentioning that we have also tested some other parameters, but we have had kind of the same results or similar results. You know so I had to take these simulations, and you can see that, for example, the third and the fifth state are representing this phenomenon, the rotting effect. So we are working right now on this to avoid this kind of problem. But yeah, up to a certain point, we can say that the problem was successfully found. So we can, we will be able to meet some safety concerns if we would set one. And the next example is a reactor separator model. This only describes again a reaction in a batch reactor, and then the products are passed to a distillation columns in order to improve the, the purity of the product. So we have set again a one interval parameter and some other were tested but we have obtained similar results. Now we have six states mm -hmm. and then we have some simulation for this problem for this problem. And uh, again some of the states were really good bounded but in the end in the fifth and sixth state we have again this wrapping effect and which when this bound grow uh, more and more or so simulation stuff due to numerical level stuff like that. Mm, yeah. So uh, to finish the presentation some conclusions, we have used some interval uh, initial value problem solvers. And these interval methods are very useful to obtain the bound and performance of chemical processes of interest. We are interested in this because we want to set these safety constraints and we want to have like, like this range of operations for the processes. Mm, obtaining bounds for more complex systems and for the trajectory can be a challenge for us at least. Um, uh, if you work on this project, uh, some reformulation techniques to avoid the defensive problem, you know very much about this. A variable appears twice or more in generalized over uh, our estimation. And implementation of some techniques to improve our bounding procedures, such as QR optimization and Taylor model. Um, increase a variety of cases of chemical engineering problems in order to explore like uh, more uh, cases of uh, more situations and increase the dimensionality. And include some events such as disturbations that I have presented. And finally, implementation of global optimization algorithms to determine optimal road trajectories. Uh, because uh, one of the final aims of this project is to obtain the, the dynamical optimized performance for these processes. So, yeah, some acknowledgments to my supervisor. And to my sponsors, the Mexican Council of Science and Technology and UCL. And thank you for your attention. Thank, thank you for your talk and bringing to the community the difficult problem of uh, solving this uh, ODEs with chemical, uh, in chemical engineers. So my first question is, uh, I understand that you are developing your own ODE solver uh, using uh, published work by Lohner, Riem, and, and Eigenram, and so on. 
uh, in fact, there is a, a software that has gathered all these ideas and let's say, I can say it is the best state of the art for the solver that is uh, open source and available. It's uh, Vino <coughs> by Medialco. So I would strongly recommend that you could first test, uh, try to use this uh, software, piece of software, and try to see how uh, it behaves on your problems. Okay, that's, that's the first uh, advice. Once again, it's very interesting to, to see. Uh, second second uh, advice may be, uh, in fact, there, there are some theories known about, for instance, uh, comparison theorems. Uh, or uh, and also theory from monotone dynamical systems that in fact uh, usually apply very well to chemical processes because the system have nice property they are sometimes called cooperative or monotone that, that is if you have an ordering in the initial conditions this initial this ordering will be kept all over the time horizon and the nice thing about that is that you may be you may not be uh, obliged to compute with sets, but only with the bounds. Yes. Sometimes the bounds are feasible. I mean, the bound, the frontier of your reach of a set is a chemical feasible set, uh, system. Hence, you would just merely uh, simulate it with a classical, at least even more a classical uh, ODE solver. So, yes. You can have a look to these uh, to these ideas. Maybe talk straight tomorrow also. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for your talk. Thank you.